I think you feel so incredibly alone when you have a child that you know is going to die. And to come somewhere like here, you don't feel that same sense of loneliness anymore. Well, Kia's nine now, and he started coming to Darien House in June 2007. He's got a condition called metachromatic leukodystrophy, which is quite a rare genetic disease. After Kia was diagnosed, obviously we had a lot of involvement from um, doctors and uh, the community nursing team, and we were introduced to Darien House by the community nurse who made the referral for us to, to come and have a look round. When we first sort of heard about um, Darien House, we, we probably didn't really understand what a hospice was, to be, to be perfectly honest. It's just a bit quite scary at first. You, you obviously you associate hospice with really, really sick children, as opposed to it being respite care, a really lively, fun, loving place. It is quite frightening because you, you do have to confront why you're coming here. So, you know, there was an element of fear about it. You know, we did sort of have to face what something that we kept pushing to the back of our minds, but the minute you walk through the door, you're just greeted so warmly and made to feel so welcome that, that you kind of don't really think about what's happening. You know, you're just happy to be here. Oliver takes a lot of our time. When we come here, they obviously help us take over Oliver's care, but help us to spend time, quality time as a family. So even if you've got a worry or something like that, it completely takes your mind off it. They're straight into the goo, straight in the painting or straight in the playroom. They do art, they can go in the light room. And Keir uses the pool a lot because he likes swimming, so he goes in the pool. We've got a physiotherapist who's fantastic. You know, it went from being somewhere we thought we would be frightened about being and frightened about coming back to, to somewhere that we, we look forward to coming to. We built up a relationship sort of slowly over time with people and um, as we've stayed and different people have looked after Kia, we've got to know quite a lot of the staff and they're brilliant, they're really fun. I'd say the phrase, you don't have to be mad to work here, but it helps, <laughs> applies. To the staff, definitely. <laughs> yeah. No, they're just always, um, they're just always so beat. I think they're just reliving the childhood through the kids that come here sometimes. They, they really, really are. You can kind of just let your hair down and be as daft and as wild as you like. You don't have to be the, the parent anymore. You can begin to be a child when you're here. We came to Darien House with our son Dexter, who we had in September 2007. Um, he had a, a rare metabolic disorder called Zellweger syndrome. Babies with the condition never survive past six months old. So once we were told, we were very lucky to be able to take Dexter home um, when he was a week old. Um, and we kept him at home and we, we came, brought him to Darien House. Unfortunately, he um, passed away when he was four weeks and three days old, um, but he had a very good quality of life in that time. When, when we were losing Dexter, one of the nurses very honestly said to us that he didn't think Dexter would make it through the night. And that was really incredible for us because the night that we came here, that night we, we came for some respite and we were going to go upstairs and have some sleep. And if it weren't for that kind of honesty, that frankness of saying, do you know what, maybe that's not the night to do this. It, we, you know, we may have lost him without being with him. We were very lucky to be with him when he passed. And you know, that kind of honesty is invaluable. I think Derry and House understand my situation more because I suppose you see families with and children with all different needs and I think they also understand that every individual child has different needs and every different family also deal with them in different ways. So you can describe to people who aren't in this situation until you're blue in the face really about what it feels like but they can't understand and I would never expect them to understand. It just makes you feel like you're part of the human race again because sometimes 
you feel so cut off from the rest of the world because everything feels so sad and overwhelming that you feel like you're not part of it anymore and coming here makes you feel like you're part of a normal life again. I know that Derry and Health rely on a lot of funding. I think it's somewhere around the two million mark just to keep open year by year. They depend a lot upon the support of fundraising or charity based things and stuff like that. They just need as much support as they can get really. I would say, you know, please support this fantastic place. You know, it really is a lifeline for families like ours. You know, they don't get very much funding from the government, so any money that can be raised and donated is, is most welcome. Unfortunately, the sort of thing that happened to us happens to families every day, and without this kind of facility, without the kind of people that work here, I'm just not sure how we would have gotten through. It just changes our, our whole perspective of life and stuff like that. It's just, it's brilliant. It's such an amazing place that Everyone here just knows that your life is never going to be the same again, but they have an incredible way of making that feel okay.